PLA used to be the king, and then it wasn't. Let's find out why. Stick around. Okay, first, before we get into PLA, I was running some tests last night, night before last, printing some stuff on the CD plus four and doing some testing to figure out temperatures and flow rates and all that. You got to see this video. That is uh, 484 kilograms, thousand something pounds of force for a piece this size, that thick. Anyway, back to today's video. That's for a future video. So you just recently link up here. Oh, by the way, I'm Scott, Edge of 3D. In case you didn't know that, you're here. You know who I am. Um, I did a uh, did a uh, product launch video with Polymaker on their high temperature PLA, and some people were nice and asked how high temperature PLA compares to regular PLA, and some people were rather snarky about their comments and and uh, acted like myself and. Uh, um, some of the others that tested this stuff are somehow paid off by Polymaker to talk good about their stuff. And you know what? I, you figured out on your own. I'm not going to say it. Um, Polymaker sponsors my channel. Polymaker doesn't pay me to do these videos. Polymaker doesn't see these videos until they're out. And if Polymaker is good, I'll say so. If Polymaker is bad, I'll say so. You don't believe me? Go back and look at some of my other videos. Polymaker isn't always the best filament I test. By a long shot. They sponsor the channel. They give me a budget to buy whatever filament I want. I'm not told what I can and can't buy. I'm not told what I can and can't test. I'm not told what I can and can't say about what I test. They give me a budget. I buy stuff. I test it. They see the videos the same time you see the videos. So, rant over, climbing back down off my soapbox, blood pressure, woo saw. We'll, we'll have a sip of tea here. So moving forward, HTPLA. Um, I know I have some here. HTPLA. This is HTPLA. This is HTPLA. This is HTPLA. Um, it's a good filament. I didn't have any PLA on hand to test at the time I tested the HTPLA. I had some Polyterra PLA, and I had some Silk PLA, but I didn't have just plain old-fashioned PLA. I do now. I did the tests. I've run all the samples. I've uploaded them to my web page where you can look at all the samples, and I have the results. And is high-temperature PLA better than regular PLA or PLA Pro, which is over there printing right now? Because... I need some parts that uh, that look like this right here, and this is ASA, and I've never had PLA do this, so I'm uh, I'm reprinting these parts in PLA because I've printed lots and lots of Death Racers and lots and lots of these parts in PLA, PLA Pro. They've held up just fine, so PLA Pro it's going to be for this one. Anyway. Did the tests, got the numbers. We're going to jump over here to the screen, and I, I ran the same set of tests I did. I did the tension pull, this one here, here, right here, where it pulls. You can see that. This is PLA Pro, which actually didn't break. This is PLA, regular PLA, and it did break on tension. Or PLA Pro layer adhesion. Here's regular PLA Izod shock test. And here is PLA Pro Izod shock test. That's what the tests look like. This is what I do. So just to be clear, I do five samples of each item. Tensile test, which is printed laying flat on all walls. Layer adhesion, which uses boron standards, link video description down below, I'll put what I use my print settings. Um, 
The IZOD shock test uses the same settings as the tensile tests, 999 walls printed solid. The direct thread and heat set threads, those use boron standards. So there you go, that's what it is. Now let's jump over here and let's see if I can get back to the right screen. There we go. So this is my materials testing site you can jump onto. I do not hide it behind a paywall. You don't have to be a Patreon supporter or anything like that. If you appreciate what I do, jump onto my Ko-Fi account or coffee and uh, make a donation. That's all I ask. Um, this is a hobby. I don't make any money at it. Even with sponsorships, I spend more a month than I make. But I enjoy doing it, and it's fun, and I get to break stuff. So, PLA. Let's take a look at PLAs. So these first four are the high temp PLAs, and we're just going to go with the as printed and get rid of the underneath or the annealed stuff out of there because regular PLAs aren't annealed anyway. So x-axis yield load. Um, just straight PLA did by far the best. 226 kilograms of force, 205 and 204 respectively on PLA Pro and high temp PLA glass fiber, and just regular high temp PLA 174.64. The yield point, how far it stretches before it gives, um, 2.48 to 2.7 on everything except the glass fiber, and that went out clear out to 3.41. This is an average of five samples. X-axis break point. Well, PLA Pro didn't break. Let me show you here. This is, well, let me find them. This is what the PLA Pro did. So the way my machine is set up is it preloads to five kilograms of force, and then everything zeroes out, and then it starts pulling on it. And wherever it peaks at, it records that peak, and on a lot of materials it peaks and then it starts to decline and then it finally breaks. So I have it set to record the peak and the distance it's pulled when it reaches peak and then as it declines whatever distance it's at where it either breaks which result, which is a sudden drop in force or reaches 50 percent of peak. It stops there. That's what all the PLA pros did. I had one that broke the other nine samples, because I did ten, the other nine samples, yeah, they they look exactly like this. So back to the chart over here. Um, um, layer adhesion. Another one that had me confused. So if you go back and watch my high temp PLA launch video, I printed all the HT PLA stuff on an ANET A8, ten year old printer. Then as I'm doing the testing on the PLA and the PLA Pro, I'm noticing layer adhesion temperatures that are just off the chart compared to the high temp stuff. So I grabbed the spool of just the straight high temp PLA. I put it in the same printer using the same settings that both of these were printed at. I printed several layer adhesion samples. I tested them all this morning. They're all within the margin of error of this 44.2. So that I, I'm, I'm confident on, on these layer adhesion numbers. PLA and PLA Pro, that's some fantastic layer adhesion right there. Uh, direct thread, three millimeter screw threaded directly into a part with a printed hole. I think I print them at 2.7 millimeter. Thread the screw direct into it. I don't cut threads with a thread cutter. I just let the screw cut the threads. Um, PLA, almost 95 kilograms of force to pull that screw out. PLA Pro, a little over 71, almost 72 to pull it out. And uh, heat sets. So this one was a little little interesting. Um, heat sets, 105 on the low end on for the HT PLA and 167.78 for the for the uh, straight for the regular PLA. But I want to show you how these did on the PLA Pro. Again, I got to find the part. And let's switch the camera over here. So this was the PLA Pro heat set. So you can see the heat set in there. And I screw the piece in there and when I go to pull it, it, it actually separated layers above and below the heat set you can see right here. And then it stretched the part. And it 
kind of started to pull the heat set out, but it stretched the part. So it was, was a very interesting one. And finally, the Izod shock test. Uh, that's the hammer that comes down and shocks the part. Gives you a, a shear strength number. Um, PLA Pro did very well here. Uh, the rest of these, all in the range of most of the ASAs and ABSs, um, and some of the fiber filled materials and stuff, because fiber filling them tends to make them more brittle, unless it's high temp PLA glass fiber, then it makes it stronger. Um, let's just take a look at all material types, all treatment types. And you can see ABSs are in the 55 ranges, uh, glass fiber ABS, uh, Soriatec down to 26, ASA glass fiber Soriatec 27, and then you see the PLAs and HTPLAs here. Um, so, and then one other thing real quick on this page before we get back to the main screen. When you jump on here, if you want to compare material to material, you can click this comparison view. You can pick any one to all the materials you want and compare them side by side. So let's take uh, Polymaker High Tint PLA, PLA Black, regular PLA Pro Black, and let's just compare that to, let's say, an ABS and an ASA, all in the same color, as printed, no annealing. And you can come down here and look at the charts, and that gives you a side-by-side -side comparison of materials. PLA and PLA Pro on X-axis, they're beating the uh, ASAs and ABSs, well, in the high-tent PLA. Uh, the yield point, how far it stretches, they're all pretty close to the same. ASA stretched a little further before it yielded. Break points, how far it goes after it yields. Layer adhesion, I mean, numbers don't lie. 182 kilograms of force on PLA, 137 on PLA Pro. Direct threads, PLAs beat the ASAs and the high temp PLA. Heat set, same results. Izod shock, this is the difference here. ABS and ASA definitely withstand more shock load than PLAs. So, there you go. Um, PLA is still probably the best overall all-around filament. It just works. It just prints. No special printers. No special settings. I used a 10-year-old ANET A8 and printed all this. Everything on this desk that was printed in PLA all of this. This was actually printed in a different printer because it's ASA. But everything else up here, all these, printed on an ANET A8. 10 year old printer. Printed them just fine. Um, all this stuff has been in an oven at 150 degrees Celsius. So, just your basic inexpensive PLA. If you're prototyping, just printing stuff to play with in the house, toys for the kids, it's a good filament. It's a really good filament. Prints easy. No special skills required. No special printer. PLA Pro, that takes it up a step. It's a little stronger, a little tougher material. Has a tiny bit better heat resistance. I'm told I have not tested that yet. That's coming. And then the high temp PLAs, they're not as strong in a lot of the categories, but you have to ask yourself, do they need to be? Is this required? Um, I'm building a V0, They're just like that one. Well, that's an older model, but I'm building one of the new modern versions of a V0. I'm going to use the, uh, the Power Tool Yellow High Temp PLA Glass Fiber, and it's going to be a uh, uh, Damar Eugene um, Walt, I think, Walter. Damar Eugene Walter uh, Tribute. It's just somebody I know, Demar Eugene Walter in yellow. Um, we're going to see how it works out. That is not the targeted audience for this stuff, but let's try it. Like I said in one of my other videos, if we don't look behind the door, we don't know what's there. So that's where we're at. The clip at the beginning of the PPA carbon fiber that almost 
took my machine to its limit. My machine's built to handle 500 kilograms of force. We were up there at 484 kilograms. Um, not, not much headroom there. I mean, just one more click on the screw and we could be over 500. So, some amazing material. That video is upcoming. I am leaving town tomorrow on business. I'll be gone all week. I get back next weekend. I got a pack for Midwest Rep Rap Festival, and then I take off on Thursday morning to be there uh, in basically a week and a half, two weeks. So Friday, June 20th through Sunday, June 22nd, Goshen, Indiana, fairgrounds. When you're headed out of town towards the fairgrounds, our very first driveway you come to, don't go up to the main drive, turn in the drive that kind of goes, you'll see the fairgrounds, you turn in the first driveway, follow that road down around, you'll see a big building, park on this side of the fence, walk through the fence, big overhead door on the south end, that's the main hall. Apparently they have a second building this year, and the uh, organizers have asked me if I will set up in the other building with the dragsters and the test equipment and stuff like that to maybe draw some people over there. So I told them I don't care where I set up as long as I'm there. Anyway, Midwest Rep Rap Festival, two weeks. Um, Soraya Tech PPA Carbon Fiber and PPA Carbon Fiber Core. That's the next materials I'm going to do a video on. I don't think I'll get it done before Murph, but I'm going to try. So, for each and every one of you that stick around, watch us all the way to the end, listen to me ramble. I really appreciate it. If you like it, hit the thumbs up. Hit the subscribe button. That helps my channel. Uh, drop a comment down below. That also helps with the algorithms. It gets uh, YouTube to put this video in front of more people. And uh, finally, thumbs up, thumbs down, positive comment, negative comment, whatever. Let me know. I try to answer them all. I definitely do read all the comments. And, uh, you know, hit the bell icon. You'll know when I drop the next video. As always, I appreciate you. And peace out. We'll see you on the next one.